Hello and uh, welcome to my finance teacher. We continue talking about bond valuation. In the last couple of videos we talked about calculating bond price and we've talked about two components of interest rate risk, price risk and reinvestment risk. Here we continue to talk about different types of bond prices. Quoted price or clean price, which is a price that does not include any accrued interest. And the actual invoice price or the dirty price which does include accrued interest. So what does it mean? Well, uh, before going into the details of these two different types of prices, let's have a look at this interest again, as it's included in the definition of these quoted and invoice prices. Interest or yield to maturity. We can easily calculate yield to maturity on the bond using this formula equals rate in Excel. And for that, we're going to need the time to maturity of the bond, the amount of coupon payments, the price of the bond, and its face value. To calculate that yield to maturity, let's have a look at this example. Let's say you are buying a three-year bond for $980. The bond has a face value of $1,000 and it pays 6% coupon rate, with the coupon payment being made once per year. How much is the yield to maturity that you can earn? Generally for bonds we will have five types of variables that are easy to use in Excel calculations. The rate that you've seen a moment ago, PV for present value, FV for future value or face value, number of periods and regular payments. In this case present value is the price as presently you're going to pay the price for the bond. Let's enter 950. Face value is $1,000, number of periods in this case is three one-year annual periods. And the regular payment is 6% out of the face value, making it $60. Let's see what happens if we try to calculate the rate here. That's number of periods, the regular payments, the present value or the price, and the face value. Excel is uh, going to give us a bit of an error over here because we need to match the direction of the cash flows with the appropriate signs. If you buy the bond, that means you're going to pay the price right now, which will be a cash outflow out of your pocket. Turning that into negative is going to fix our error. And if I want to see more details on this approximate 7% yield to maturity, we can use this button in Excel, it's actually 6.76% yield to maturity. That's on an annual basis with coupon payments made once per year. So far so good, but when these coupon payments are made multiple times per year, there is something to pay attention to, although things are still pretty simple in that case. So let's adjust the description of the bond where the coupon payment is made quarterly. And as a computer doesn't actually know what kind of periods am I looking at? Am I looking at annual or quarterly periods or are these monthly periods? I need to adjust this number manually. Three years with quarterly payments gives us 12 periods and each period in that case will pay me a coupon payment of $60 per year. That's 6% on annual basis out of the face value divided by four as four payments will be made within a year that gives me $15 of regular payments per quarter and again a very important thing to remember is we need to adjust this formula to reflect the fact that we have multiple payments per year again as the computer does not know what is reflected in the number of periods over here are these annual or monthly or quarterly periods the calculation of the rate is simply per period. However, remember the industry standard is that the rates are expressed on an annual basis. So we need to remember to multiply this by the number of these periods in a year to get the correct APR annual percentage rate. And um, it's very easy to forget to multiply by this number of periods per year. So let me put in the formula and highlight for a second. So here it is, a vivid reminder, when we have multiple coupon payments per year, in calculating the yield to maturity, after using the rate formula in Excel, we need to remember to multiply the answer by the number of periods in a year to get us 
up to that annual percentage rate. In this case, there are four quarters in a year. The correct answer is 6.74% APY or APR. Now that we've reviewed the rates a little and the timing of the payments of that interest, we can get back to the difference between invoice price and quoted price. To illustrate the difference, let's have a look at a timeline. Let's have a look at this two-year bond with a face value of 1000 and a coupon rate of 12%. But the coupon payment is made twice a year. So half of that 12%, $60, 6% in each case, is paid semi-annually. And with the market rate of 7.8%, let's first find the price of the bond, simply as we did in the recent bond valuation video. For that, I can use the PV formula in Excel, enter the rate, which is 7.8%, but we need to remember to match the timing. Here, the rate is on an annual basis, whereas each of the periods I'm looking at is semi-annual. So we need to divide the rate by two to bring us down to semi-annual rate. Number of periods, we are looking at four periods of half a year each in this two-year bond. The regular PMT is $60 and the face value is $1,000. That gives us a price of, let's see how much is that, a price of $1,076.41. Now let's say we have this bond listed and the listing uh, shows or quotes this quoted price of $1,076.41. However, let's say it took a couple of months to find a buyer for this bond, meaning that the seller had to wait for a couple of months to get rid of the bond and the buyer, instead of waiting for half a year for the next coupon payment, will only have to wait for another four months until the next coupon payment. It seems that in this case, it's only fair to compensate the seller for the accrued interest. That's in the form of a relatively higher invoice price or a dirty price that would include accrued interest. And of course, a higher price would be paid for by the buyer, which is fair enough as the buyer has less time to wait until the next coupon payment. And the trick is to calculate that accrued interest where dirty price or the invoice price is simply the sum of quoted price and the accrued interest. In our example, as the $60 is paid for the semi-annual basis and the seller had to wait for two months to find the buyer, two months out of half a year period makes up one third of the time, meaning that it's only fair that one third of the next coupon payment is that accrued interest, which itself, the accrued interest itself, is going to be equal to that time waited since the last coupon payment, in this case, a couple of months, divided by the total period of regular coupon payments, in this case, six months, multiplied by the regular coupon payment amount. So two months divided by six months, so that's one third times $60 accrued interest is $20, plus the quoted price, gives you a dirty price of $1,096.41. And that is the distinction between quoted price and invoice price, or clean price and dirty price. To strengthen that understanding, let's have a look at a couple of more examples. You've bought a bond with an invoice price of 35400 The coupon rate is 6% per year. The coupon payment is made semi-annually. The next coupon payment is in two months. The interest rate is 6%, that is, the yield to maturity is 6%, and we need to find the clean price of the bond. Here's the timeline. At time 0 was the previous coupon payment, 4 months ago from now, which is the time of the invoice price. And the next coupon payment is in another 2 months. According to this, our invoice price should include clean price and accrued interest over the period of 4 months. The accrued interest is going to be 6% divided by 2. That brings the interest rate to semi-annual levels rather than an interest rate per year. All of that must be multiplied by 2 thirds because 4 months is 2 thirds of the whole period of 6 months. 
and all of that is a percentage of face value. We have the invoice price, which was 35,400, and if the coupon rate is equal to the interest rate, then the face value is equal to the clean price. So we have only one variable in this equation, in that case, which is equal to that's 1.02 and the clean price. The clean price is then equal to 35,400 divided by 1.02. I hope this video is helpful. If it is, hit that like button. For any upcoming tests, share this video with your friends and good luck with your exams.